Surprise! Did you really think I'd let Halloween pass with zero bonus content? I don't think so. If you had not guessed by now, I am an author and I'm actually working on a horror novel. So I thought what better time to share an excerpt than today on Halloween. So without further ado, let's go. This is an excerpt from a work in progress by myself, C. Brown, with a working title, The Hanged Man, The Moon, and The Reversed Magician. You want to talk about your sister? Kara asks. We're tucked into my queen-sized bed, down comforter pulled up to our chins. A weighted blanket presses down on my side, and a honeysuckle-scented plug-in nightlight glows from an outlet by the closed door. She died, I whisper. Sadness pricks at the corners of my eyes. Kara sits up in bed and turns to face me. Her eyes are wide in the dim light. Ari, why didn't you say anything? I thought you'd just gotten a fight or something. I don't know. A tear slips down my face and lands on my pillow. It's just all so messed up. Tell me, she says gently placing a hand on my arm under the covers. So I do. I tell her all about the supposed suicide note, the weird texts from my mom and the weirder phone call with my dad. I tell her about the carved message in the coffee shop and the guy that was watching me and the red please on my own note. Kara is silent for a moment. I'm so sorry, Ari. I can't imagine how you're feeling. This is... It's a lot. Yeah. She squeezes my arm reassuringly. What can I do? No any good exorcists? My dry sarcasm hits even my ear the wrong way. Don't joke about that, Kara hisses. I know you don't believe in the occult stuff like I do, but you're right. I don't know what's going on, but no need to piss it off. Exactly. For a while, there is only the sound of our hushed breathing. Then, Kara asks, What if it really is Emma? Kara... I know it sounds weird, but is it any weirder than what's happening? Maybe she didn't take her life like people seem to think, and she's trying to communicate with you from the other side. I mean, I can't think of anything clearer than written messages. That's what's so weird. Let's say I believe in this stuff. Aren't ghosts supposed to need time to learn how to manipulate the physical world? Kara giggles. Tell me you're not getting your ghost intel from Hollywood. I smile in the dark. Maybe I am. She props her head up with one hand. What do you think happens after we die? This is getting a little deep for a 2.30 in the morning, girlfriend. You know I'm liable to get existential in the wee hours. The smile in her voice coats her words. Let's get existential in some other hours. I'm not blowing you off. It's just been a hell of a day. I need sleep, big time. I get it, she says, rolling to her back. If you need anything, I got you. Losing someone is the worst thing to have to do alone. Back at you, I whisper, before sleep claims me. Cool breath on my cheek stirs me awake. Kara, move over, I groan, and slide my hand along the mattress to push her away. My fingers slip off the edge of the bed. Ice fills my belly. The breath on my cheek gets closer to my face. Its chill raises the tiny hairs on my skin. The smell of mud and death is pungent in my nostrils. Open your eyes. The whisper sounds as though several voices are speaking at once. All of the voices are strangers. All of them are angry. Lips brush my cheek with each syllable. Terror paralyzes me. My hand still dangles off the edge of the bed. I fight the urge to pull it back under the covers. Cold, wet fingers weave through mine. The skin is soft, mottled, rotted. My eyes spring open. A shadowy figure kneels beside me. Its hair flows as though underwater. 
two malicious, glimmering specks leer at me. Emma? The word squeaks from my throat. The figure's hair swirls in the air as it shakes its head slowly. Get out. My throat feels as though it will close at any moment. The figure lowers its head and raises itself to stand. It looms beside the bed. Beside me, Kara snuffles in her sleep. Get out, I say, louder this time. My hands shake and grip the sheets. Its head twists haltingly to one side. A moan emanates from its widening mouth. Craggy teeth glisten. Get out! I stand and push. My hands slip into the creature, and the sleeves of my sweatshirt are pushed up to my elbows. My arms feel like they're submerged in freezing sludge. A light clicks on behind me. The figure dissipates into smoke with a hiss. What are you doing? Kara croaks. The bedside lamp is on behind her. It's four in the morning. There... There was... There was something here. But it... It... I turn toward her, arms held in front of me. The skin is curiously devoid of any physical sign of the creature. But a pungent smell remains. The smell of decay. Kara crawls from the bed and wraps me in her arms. I bury my face in the familiar scent of her conditioner. It's all right, she says. Just breathe. Let me go get something from my purse. No, don't leave me, please. Hot tears streak down my cheeks. Okay, okay, come with me then. She takes my trembling hand firmly in her own and leads me down the hall. In every corner of the dark apartment, my imagination paints another shadow figure, come to take me away. I can still hear its moan. Kara flips on the overhead light in the living room and releases my hand to rummage in her purse by the door. Here we go, she says, pulling out a thick stick of something from the bag and what looks like an ashtray. You have a lighter? In one of the kitchen drawers, but you can't smoke in here. My super will kill me. Not to smoke, to smudge, it's white sage. She takes the green-white bundle to the kitchen. What? We burn the sage, she says, lighting the tips of the leaves with a located lighter. She blows gently on the flames to extinguish them, and smoke wisps from the sage. Then, we direct the vapors into the areas we want to purify. You might want to disconnect the smoke detector and open these windows. It's like 30 degrees outside. It's not much warmer in here. Kara studies the smoke with an expert eye. Besides, I don't really feel like asphyxiating, do you? Kara walks the smoking sage to the back of the apartment, carefully suspending it over the ashtray. Peace and purity, she whispers. I stand on a chair and grab the smoke detector from the ceiling. The fat battery pops out easily and clatters to the table. I pull the blinds up with a plastic tick tick tick, pop open the window, and cold air flows into the kitchen. I shiver and pull the sleeves of my hoodie down over my hands. Kara emerges from the hallway, smudge stick held aloft, wafting the white smoke into every corner of the apartment. Peace and purity, she repeats under her breath. The white sage's minty, earthy scent is soothing to my fried nerves. Finally, she stubs out the smudge stick in the ashtray. That should do it. You just happen to have a stick of sage in your purse? No, I didn't just happen to have it. She balances the sage in the tray, burnt end down, and turns to me. Her arms cross over her chest. You know I always have some woo-woo stuff in my bag. She puts air quotes around woo-woo. I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. You've always been kind of dismissive of my beliefs, Ari. I know they're not the usual church on Sunday type thing, but they work for me. I bite my lip. I didn't know you felt that way. Well, I do, and I'm just trying to help. I smudged your house at four in the morning because you said you saw something. I didn't question you, I just believed you, and I did what I thought would fix the problem. No, you're right. 
You didn't just tell me it was a bad dream or to go back to sleep, like I probably would have. The last sentence comes out hushed and ashamed. Kara takes a black elastic from her wrist and ties her wayward curly hair in a knot on top of her head. Let's just get some sleep. The smoke should be dissipated by now so you can close the window and put the smoke detector back up. I have to pee. And what is that smell? She pads off to the bathroom. While putting the apartment back to rights and scrubbing the scent of the creature from my arms, I get lost in my own thoughts. Kara is right. I've never really taken her beliefs seriously. But now that I'm seeing weird things and getting messages apparently from ghosts, well, maybe I should have been paying more attention. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that your nightmares are not going to be too scary. I will see you all in about a week. On November the 9th, we will be talking about National Novel Writing Month, or NaNoWriMo, which I will be participating in this year and hopefully finishing the horror novel that you just heard from. So that being said, okay, love you. Bye. Bye.